Um, and we do have on the agenda Mr. Bob giving an update for five minutes, but in the interest of time and um, this, the belief <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm um, I can. However, he is open to receiving questions at the end of the meeting if there's some extra time or if you have any specific questions. And Mr. Bach is always open, available in the office if you want to call and schedule the time. So now we will turn the floor over to Ms. Pillow, Ms. Branson.
and we had the whole staff dance to the song Respect, which was a lot of fun. Um, I wish we had a video of that, that would be fun to show. <laughs> so um, that was a good celebration and kind of kick it off. So I'm really excited about this program, and um, we're going to talk a little bit more tonight about parent involvement. And Mr. Garrity is going to also present um, some school climate survey data. And this is a survey that is given to third and fourth grade students twice a year. And our latest data is going to come from the spring of 2011. And so he's going to present that in a little bit. But it, um, I'll just let him tell you about it. But it's, it's, it's very interesting to see in tables and graphs and help us visualize it because it helps point out hot spots in the school where we really need to put our focus on. So, um, anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Branson now. Do a little bit about the OAS program, and then okay. Thanks so much for coming tonight. Um, like uh, Ms. Pillow said, we are now going to be really excited about that. The kids are really pumped up um, about helping everyone respect others because that is what um, respect is the main focus of um, our anti bullying um, program here at Johnson. Because if we respect everyone, then we treat everyone the way we want to treat. So I'm just going to give you some information um, about the program. So um, the common definition of bullying, a person is bullied when he or she is exposed repeatedly and over time to negative actions that could be mean or hurtful on the part of one or more other persons, and he or she has difficulty defending himself or herself. And this is the widely um, accepted uh, definition of bullying, and that's what we um, recognize here at Johnson. So three components to bullying. It's aggressive behavior that involves unwanted negative actions. It typically involves a pattern of behavior repeated over time. And that's the key. It's not being mean once. It's being mean over and over and over again. Um, and it involves an imbalance of power or strength. So the person who is showing the bullying behavior um, has some sort of power the person who is their target. It could be size, um, race, sex, um, intelligence, um, sports ability. It can be a variety of things. Um, teasing. Teasing is playful and relatively friendly. Teasing is not bullying. That's uh, where someone is joking around with someone else and they're laughing. They aren't hurt by it at all. But when repeated teasing is degrading and offensive, and it continues in spite of clear signs from the targeted student that he or she wants it to stop, then that's when it changes to bullying. Um, so the key, I guess, to bullying is, again, it's unwanted and it's repeated over time. Um, so there's nine different forms of bullying. There can be verbal bullying, social exclusion, exclusion or isolation, um, which is very big, unfortunately, in our school. Physical bullying, bullied through lies and false rumors, having false rumors, <laughs> false rumors, um, having money or other things taken or damaged, being threatened or forced to do things, racial bullying, sexual bullying, and now, unfortunately, cyberbullying. Okay, so direct versus indirect. So direct bullying, that's relatively open attacks, usually face-to-face -face, um, conversations, like verbal, degrading comments, physical bullying, shoving, hitting, kicking, that sort of thing. Indirect, um, aggressive action, concealed and subtle, um, like the social isolation, um, not letting someone sit with you at lunch, not playing with them on the playground. Um, spreading rumors and lies, and also that's where cyberbullying comes in. Okay, relational or social bullying. Behaviors intended to damage a student's reputation or social standing with peers and or the threat or loss of the relationship to manipulate others. So again, that's, that's social exclusion, spreading rumors, manipulating friendships. Okay. So this is some information just throughout the United States. So one in seven students under the age of 16 have been involved in bullying, either they were bullied or the target. 
um, the percentage of bullying students is increasing. Um, there might be significant differences in data between schools. And the percentage of students who reported being bullied <coughs> decreases as age and grade increases. And Bob will talk a little bit about that. Okay, some more information. Um, in the older grades, there's less physical bullying. Significant amounts of bullying occur between older and younger, <coughs> weaker students. Boys tend to bully and be bullied more than girls. And, unfortunately, they will even target girls, especially in the older grades. Okay, and this is some data as of 10 years ago. Um, the boys, they tend to do more bullying and they target boys and girls. Typically, their bullying is more physical, and boys report two to four more times as much bullying as girls in the higher grades. Girls engage in more indirect and subtle ways of bullying. Again, that's social exclusion. Um, okay, there's different kinds of targets. That, that is the, um, the term that we use to talk about the person who is being bullied. They are a target. They are not a victim. They are a target. Um, so there's a submissive target, um, they're bullied, but they don't bully in return and they don't provoke the bully. Um, they're not willingly accepting the bully. Um, provocative or bully victims, um, that's only 10 to 20% of targets. They can be bullied and bully others. Um, and their bullying um, can cause them to be depressed, or anxious, lack of positive self-esteem. Um, they may also display dominant, aggressive, and antisocial behavior. Um, and they're also ineffective bullies. <coughs> they don't actually provoke the bullying, but they may behave in ways that cause tension or irritation with other students. Okay, characteristics of bully. Um, bullies may have a positive attitude towards violence and use of violence. They have a strong need to dominate and subdue other <coughs> students to get their way. They're impulsive and easily angered. They show little empathy to the target. And they show defiant and aggressive behavior towards adults. Other characteristics to look at. Uh, they can be involved in social or rule breaking activities. Um, they're more likely to report owning a gun for risky reasons like to frighten others or earn respect. Um, if they're a boy, they tend to be physically stronger than their target. And bullying does not increase their self-esteem. Okay, so studies show students who bully tend to have little anxiety and uncertainty, and they have average self-esteem, which is not widely known. Um, some may be popular, but some may not be. And um, this is a really scary statistic. By age 24, boys who were identified as bullies in middle school were four times more likely to have been convicted of three or more criminal acts than those that they did not bully. So this is key for us. We need to stop it now in elementary school. Um, Studies also show students that bully have a strong need for power or dominance and they find satisfaction in causing injury and suffering in others. Students that bully may have witnessed or been involved in domestic violence and may have parents who are not involved in their lives or lack war. Um, and they may have too much freedom and not enough love in their lives. Okay, um, the bullying circle. This is something that um, all the teachers have been talking to the students about, just to make them aware. So, bullying often does not happen <coughs> with one person and another person. There's often um, a large, unfortunately, group of children who are involved. Okay, so we have the bully or bullies. Um, they start the bullying, they take an active part. This is the person, the target, um, who is unfortunately getting the bully. Um, so then we have a follower over here, and they take an active part, but they don't start the bully. So they might be backing that person up. Um, over here we have a supporter who's a passive bully. Um, they support the bullying, but they don't take an active part. So they stand there and watch. Um, over here we have uh, another passive supporter, possibly a bully, 
Um, they like the bullying, but they don't often um, show open support for it. Um, again, they're watching what happens. Um, we have a disengaged onlooker usually. We have a possible defender. Um, defenders, um, the possible defender just likes the bullying and think that they ought to help, but they don't know what to do. And then over here we have our defender. They just like the bullying and they step up and they try to help um, the target. Um, sometimes it means they try to intervene. Sometimes it means that they go and report to an adult. So um, Ms. Pillow was talking about how next week we're really going to emphasize um, the role of the defender. And I think a lot of our students, as we've been talking with them, they really um, see that as a positive role that they can take. And again, that might be actually standing up for a student. It might be helping them out, seeing if they're okay. It might be reporting to an adult. If they know that something wrong is going on and they're trying their best, as young as they are, to, um, to take a stand to help them. Um, and so that's a really big goal at Johnson this year is um, to emphasize being a defender of everyone. Okay, so myths. Only boys bully. Most bullying physical. Bullying happens more outside of school. Students who bully others are anxious and low self-esteem. <coughs> bullying is mostly an urban problem, and bullying happens more in large schools and classes. Those are just myths. Um, Many, but not all, who bully also have behavior or conduct problems. Children with disabilities, special needs, and health problems are at an increased risk of being bullied. Um, and then those students can also be bullied themselves. Bullying has evolved with technology, unfortunately, and our gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, um, and queer students are often Um, and so at Johnson, we have a no bullying tolerance at all. Our common language um, that we hope that you will support us at home is, we don't do that at Johnson. We treat everyone with respect, and that's it. There's no arguing, that's it. And so you can help us out by, at home, having conversations um, with your students. There's some tips on one of the handouts. Um, about how to talk to your student about that. And just reinforce the goals that you treat people with respect to Johnson and you will not tolerate them. Thank you. I just want to, you probably already know that we have a pretty outstanding committee that's helping to op operate this program at the school with the co chairs here who have spoken to us tonight. And I've heard lots of different schools, and this is an awesome committee. There's a lot of members of the committee here at the school, too. So you're going to get hands. We might make a quick change. Okay, so each year, the Safe Schools Project does a climate survey throughout the city schools and the county schools here in the Charlottesville area. Um, and we did one in the fall and in the spring. Last year we had a fall survey, spring survey, and this is the data from spring, which also has a comparative uh, piece to it. You see two, bar, two bars going. I apologize that whoever put the graph together flipped the colors a couple of times so you think you're dealing with one standard and you're dealing with the other. So we'll have to look read, read carefully the label when we get to the colors. Um, just wanted to let you know that in advance. So um, we had 90% of the students um, participate in the survey. That's a great number. Um, this pillow was out last year. She usually does it usually 98%, but now she's back. Uh, but 90% is a terrific number to, to draw from most surveys. You know, if you get 20%, you can use the data and you can see the by some researchers. Um, and the survey is just for third and fourth graders. So, um, take a look at this, third grade, fourth grade. Now, you're going to see an increased number here. Go, oh, don't go, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Something's going wrong at Johnson School. In fact, it's an indicator that something's going right at Johnson School because of the proximity to what we're doing. So let's look at the dark blue first. In the fall, um, third graders said that 14% felt that they were being bullied once a week, and fourth graders said 90%, <coughs> which are pretty, pretty low numbers in um, with some, of the, uh, some of the data that's worldwide and, and national. Um, then it goes up a little bit. Now, some researchers will tell you that the fourth grade is not significant data. You know, 2% is not significant. Um, but the other sort of 7%. But why is that going on? 
When a school takes on the idea of bullying prevention, it raises awareness. If you've ever bought a new car, or even a used car, I bought a Honda, it was used. And after I bought a Honda, there were Hondas everywhere. I never noticed how many Hondas there were. I pulled into a parking lot, there were five Hondas in a row, and it was not a Honda dealership, it was just a parking lot. Um, so that aware, if, if the program is getting rolling and awareness is being raised in the, in the school, then people are going to start reporting more. So because of our timing in the program, this may not be a rise in bullying, this may simply be a rise in reporting. So we won't know that for a year or so, but based, based on what I'm seeing here at Johnson School, I'm saying I'm going to guess that this is a rise in awareness and reporting more than it's a rise in um, because this group is pretty vigilant. So it, the rise also in fourth grade, which is an indication to me in the first round of the, of the program that something good is going on here in the program. Again, you're going to see numbers go up, but this gives you an indication of where the um, behaviors are happening. You know, a child may not have noticed that they were being bullied in a classroom until they learned what it was about. And then they go, yeah, I'm getting bullied in the classroom. I didn't notice what it was. So yes. So the numbers are going up in certain places. But notice where things are happening. A lot of it happens outdoors, where the supervision is less, because there's so many kids spread around. Um, bus stops, notice it did drop, which is very interesting. After school programs, it went up a little bit. That's an interesting question. I'm not sure why that is in this case. That's a significant number, so we should probably look at that. Um, Classrooms, hallways, bathrooms, cafeteria. The places where there's a little less supervision, um, you get a little bit more of the activity. In the bathroom, that's pretty, that's pretty good for bathrooms. A lot of schools, kids don't go to bathrooms. Not in high school yet. Yeah, yeah they're not in high school yet, right? My son went to high school, so they're going to go These questions are all based on the kids' own experience. Yes. Um, now let me ask, let me review that. That's a good question. This, yeah, this could be where we noticed it. Not necessarily for you, but for others too. I'll have to go back and review that question. That's a good question. Um, so, again, the numbers look like they're going up, but let's think that may be because we're we'll this. Percentages are small differences here, but this is kind of interesting. Um, bullying is sometimes fun to do. That went up a little bit. No, I'm sorry. This is where the color flips. This is where the color flips. This is where it looks really good. So um, it actually went down in, uh, in uh, Johnson. This data is 1%, maybe significant, may not be. You know, if people want to hit someone, at least it went down. Um, if you're afraid to fight, you won't have any friends, that's a pretty significant drop. So what we're starting to see, I'd say, the top and the bottom one is we're getting a nice pullback on, on negative behavior and violent behavior because of what's going on here at Johnson School. Is the same survey? Yes, yeah, it's the same survey, the same questions, the same system, um, the same uh, time frames. And Teasing. Um, students often get teased by their clothing and physical appearance. Came down a little bit. <coughs> It's still a pretty high number. But that's kind of an American thing, too. What's the percentage of our what? Percentages of kids who said this, who believe this. Of, of the entire population or those that reported bullying? Of the entire population. population. This, would, this is more of a not just so bullying, but a climate here. Yes, climate survey pieces. <coughs> Students here often get put down because of their ethnicity. Nice drop in that. For, and that's a pretty significant drop from fall to spring. Um, students get teased about how they look, they stay the same. Um, so, interesting, this one especially I think is, is helpful. You're getting a bigger and bigger international population um, in your school as well as throughout the city. Um, so, it's nice to see this as a trend. Support. Um, if I tell a teacher that someone's bullying me, the teacher will do something to help me. Um, it went down a little bit. We have a, the teachers have an interesting reason for that. It's all just um, there are adults at the school that I can go to if I have a personal problem. That went down a little bit too. Last year, this pillow was gone for quite a long time. We got to have and Mr. Weed, the assistant principal, was gone for quite a long time. We moved over to Clark School with the Clark principal. So the teachers surmised that that probably contributed to this um, because the numbers were pretty good for the for the fall, which indicated very warm um, and 
support of faculty, but when you have two key players in that role, all of a sudden gone, and, and uh, that may make a difference. But we're still, you know, still a very important thing to think about, and the staff are working on that all the time. This pillow's back. Um, before we go to questions, I'm going to jump over to another idea. Um, some people say, well, what can, what can parents do? And so what we want to think about is how, how this program works. This is a comprehensive program. It's not just done at the individual level where if someone has said, I've been bullied, then what do we do about it? It's a community. It's, we work at it at the individual level so if a teacher, a counselor, or a principal, or anyone um, notices or is responding to bullying, they want to take care of the individual. But then all the classroom teachers, as you heard from Emily, are working on things in their classrooms. This poster, which you saw, the, it's another version of the bullying prevention circle, um, is in all the classrooms, I believe, and even in the cafeteria. So the awareness is continuing to be up. It's a school-wide effort, as you heard the chairs of the, of the committee talk about the various things they're doing school-wide, and it's a community-wide effort. In the last year or so, there's been television, newspaper, and other media reporting on the bullying prevention program that's going on city and county through the Safe Schools Project and, um, with all the different schools. So we're doing this at all the elementary schools in the city, at Walker, at Buford, and at CHS. But there's a key component there, which is you, parents. So as Emily was saying a moment ago, having you be in conversation with your children about this concept um, is very helpful. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on television, a lot of stuff, people laugh about a lot of stuff in our, in our American humor. There's a lot of humor that is really bullying behavior, in my opinion. No offense to anybody that likes Garfield the Cat, but if you read Garfield the Cat, that would probably be an interesting sociological study, because Garfield's humor is all based on meanness and hurtful behavior towards the spider, towards the dog, and towards the man. The, 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 the cat is constantly being mean to that, and that's where the joke is, supposedly. I read Garfield you know, 20 years ago, and I stopped reading Garfield, but I didn't like it. And then I, then I got into this area's research, and I thought, ooh, I really don't like it now, because... And then you start looking around our humor, and a lot of our humor is at the expense of somebody. Why is it funny? You know, when I was a kid, we told <coughs> there were lots of jokes going around, with, and the target of the joke was an ethnic population. You probably know what I'm talking about. Um, and that's humor at the expense of something. That's a, that's a societal bullying behavior. So it takes us talking to our kids, my kid went to Johnson also, um, us talking to our kids and keeping that conversation going. And pointing out that, you know, what's funny about that? Why is that humorous? I didn't find it funny. But they had mom, they're funny. Uh, I can explain why. There's no reason. I'm looking out for this. Any comments or questions? Yes, sir. Just today, my son came home and uh, said that he said, I think I might have been bullied today. And I said, really? What happened? And he said, well, I was out on the playground and I was reading. And this little boy called me Rediac, you know, like Brainiac, but Rediac. And he's like, so I, I, I wrote a note and I put it in the, you know, appropriate comment box or whatever. And my response was, which I now realizing may not have been appropriate was, I don't know if necessarily that was so bad. You know, he, you know, I don't know if the kid was trying to be mean. He may have just been jealous. You know, maybe he doesn't enjoy reading as much as you do. You know, I don't think you need to take it necessarily so personally. You know, and I said to him, quite honestly, throughout life, people are going to probably call you a lot worse than that. And, you know, there's uh, some points in life where you just need to let things kind of roll off and not take people seriously and just be like, you know, that's that's your issue, that's not my issue, you know, and if, if you let what someone's saying to you get to you, that's giving them power. And it, it's, it's better for you to just be like, whatever, man, that's, that's your deal. And so, that's where I kind of, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm of the, you know, my, my also a few weeks ago, I, you know, my younger son said something to me, and my older son was like, Dad, you know, Grayson said this to you, and I said, you know what, buddy, 
sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And, you know, just kind of laughingly. And Richard said, Dad, words can hurt. <laughs> no, <but> He's right. <laughs> He's been listening to our staff. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I immediately realized how, you know, I, 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 I messed up. And I, 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 but it sounds like the conversation that you have is an excellent conversation. You know, you were supporting your son, you were saying that, you know, being a reedy act, you know, being called something and being a negative name calling attempt by the other child, but it's actually quite common. Right. So the term geek and nerd used to be considered a negative term. Now they're, you know, the geek right. squad, hey, we want yeah, them to right. show up. You know, those terms have turned into very positive terms <coughs> for someone who's got that technology to show up. Um, so, thank you. It's very helpful. Any comments or questions? Yes, sir. So, <clears throat> everything you've, you've talked about so far is, uh, seems to be mostly directed at um, uh, training people not to bully and, and what to do with you and that sort of thing. Uh, what this is sort of goes along with uh, what's happened there? Uh, what uh, training is being done for the targets of bullying, and specifically, for instance, you know, with, uh, having a law or whatever? Well, the yeah, we'll come to you in just a second. The Olvaeus Bullying Prevention Program is mostly geared toward the staff mm -hmm. to create a safe environment through bullying prevention. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah. go. That's a very good question. So what, what we are doing as a staff this year is we have tracking sheets or tracking charts, if you want to call it that. And every teacher has a chart. And what they do is each week or every two weeks, they turn these charts into me. And all the charts are um, specific examples of both the victim and the child doing the bullying behavior with their initials. So they all come into me and I keep this master list in my office to chart, um, to find patterns of both the children who are bullying and the targets. And what I do with the targets is have um, small groups. So if I notice that this one child, Johnny, is, is being targeted you know, weekly or, or daily and he needs help, he needs help to be for himself, maybe he needs help with some social skills or that kind of thing. So they come and eat lunch with me and have a, we have a group and we work on building them up and empowering them. Um, and the same thing for the, the, the children who, um, I don't like calling them bullies, children who are doing bullying behaviors. Um, I work with them as well in helping them to, whether it's you know, an anger management problem that they have or um, just Again, social skills, they, they're not really sure how to go about um, interacting with children. Kind of yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll add on to what Ms. Pillow is, is mentioning in that in their, we're in regular conversation with the staff and with Ms. Pillow. When we do have a pattern emerge, we're pretty quick to respond as an administrative team to um, also assign consequences for that. And there are certain, there's a pretty strong stance statewide. Um, and there's actually law in Virginia uh, by, you know, that, that kind of dictate and prescribe some of the responses that we have to take as administrators. And that includes not only dealing with the person engaging in the bullying behavior, but also reaching out to families of students who are the targets and saying, hey, we want you to know that your child has been targeted. There's some bullying, identified bullying that's going on with your child. We want you to know that we're working on that. We are assigning consequences and so forth. You know, I'll t uh, you know, we oh, take from like you know therapy to the well. There's staff. there's yeah there's the, the counseling in the group sessions with Miss Pillow as far as you know how to work through that. We work regularly with students on how to report if we if we encounter a situation where there was a bystander and the bystander we know there was somebody there and they didn't report. There's some education about okay you were around this you didn't can we talk about why not can we give you some you know working on giving some skills to to report in the future. Um, but I tell you, we, we have really strong, a really strong stance. And, and I'll say we've had two students in the past year at Johnson that just couldn't stop and didn't come back to Johnson School. You know, and it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, and I never ever want to get to that place with a student. But for a few students, they just they couldn't come around to, you got to stop this here. And, you know, unfortunately, they didn't return to Johnson School. Um, so, you know, I hope that we never get there with a child, and usually we don't. 
Um, but it's a pretty ratcheting up um, effect. Those are the bullies you're referring to. Yes, yes. Because yeah. 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 I, I feel like the targets maybe don't come back sometimes. They may happen. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've never had a target not come back to Johnson. Um, no. I think not it's yet. Not going to private school. Or no, I, I don't think, you know, it's really, we take a strong stance and we really get the families in and start engaging quickly. And quickly. It's, it's a quick process. It's not, we have to see five, five to 12, you know, it's, we see a couple, we see two or three, boom, it's boring the world. And I've had students that are much older. I work with preschoolers. But my office door is in an area of the school where kids are sometimes moving between a class and there may not be a teacher right there. And they've come to my office and said, I just saw so-and-so bullying my friend. Or somebody that said something very, you know, made me feel really sad. They hurt my feelings. They, they know that our little protocol on the back of that sheet that was just handed out includes, if I can't stop it, I go tell an adult. And I think that they know to go so quickly that that, that is empowering. And, and they, there's a therapeutic process happening within the, the moment, in, and I think it in helps. Power in the yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but, and I, so I think that I get real specific on your question, but you know, in the counseling offices where it just gets custody, um, not necessarily through the classroom instruction through this program. This program is more creating a safe environment where the, the, the environment, people don't allow this to happen. And if it does happen to people, they can stop it. And, and help encouraging kids to be bystanders, not to sort of, you know, what can you do? What does the target do? But what can the observers do? Do you just watch it? Or do you, you know, support? And we don't want to, we're not creating vigilante groups and little gangs of kids stopping the holding. We're not doing that kind of thing. Those aren't the defenders we're talking about. We're talking about someone who will go up to someone who's being picked on. Anyone put us? We're going to sit at our table. And, and I would say, in looking at the data, uh, at this point in the year, I'm pretty confident our numbers will be much higher at the end of this year, uh, just with the sheer numbers of issues that we've been dealing with in the office. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really good to have the data tracking. It's really good to, to have students at the end of the day that had an issue. And two young ladies came to the office right away and said, Mr. Fox, we saw this and reported. So first, I've already contacted both sets of parents. We have a meeting set up for tomorrow morning and we're on. So it, it's something that happens very quick. Uh, you know. I think every probably everybody in one way, shape, or form in this room has been a target of bullying at some point in time or another. I was, and I know it didn't feel good. And my commitment to you as parents, as the leader of this school, is we're not going to have children afraid to come to school. We're not going to have children not feeling safe at school and not feeling good about school. So when those things happen, we generally take a pretty, pretty strong, swift stance to stop it. So. And at the same time, it's not stigmatizing someone who does bullying behavior. It's helping them, as Ms. Pillow says, helping them change their habits. Right. Um, so, so this is a very loving place. And this is a very loving effort, uh, but it's a very, you know, we don't do this. What's the point? We don't do this here at Johnson School. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, Emily, and Allison, jump in. And not necessarily now, but I wonder if it would be helpful to, sh to share resources with parents as well as with staff and best practices. So, as a classroom teacher, I found that having there were specific pieces of literature that kids really connected with. And so sharing those with us as parents, you know, what are, okay. are age-appropriate books we can check out from the library that will help, or role-playing, or I mean, even as simple as YouTube clips, right, where you can see this is what it is and then have something to talk about so the parents have a meaningful context, whether film, role-play, or a book to engage with the kids. Absolutely. If you go to the Charlottesville, the Safe School Seville website, that's Arbor's website, safeschoolseville.org. Um, or just Google Safe Schools Charlottesville, you'll get our website, the Safe Schools website. And there are a couple of videos, they're not from elementary age, but there are a couple of videos that will pop up. There are little clips, links, and you can see the one about the red haired boy, and if you've ever seen the one with the red haired boy, um, it's a bystander encouragement video. And click on the little red haired boy and see what happens. Um, but then when you when you go to that YouTube video, then that you'll see six more. And then you can find all sorts of other Basically, happens with red hair boys. He's standing there looking at the hall. He's got his jacket on. It's a cold day. He's got the bright red hair, natural red hair. And along come these three guys. And they come along and they start taunting and teasing. One guy pulls out an orange cap and slides it on his head and taunts and teases him about his red hair. And in the background, you see this boy with kind of blonde hair and two other kids sitting there just watching this. And the boy with the red hair is just looking sad and sad. And the next day, 
see the same three guys coming along, getting the same scene. There's the boy ready to go home. And as they approach, the guy reaches, reaches into his pocket to pull out the red cap. And then the other guy says, oh, stop. Because beyond that, the blonde haired boy now has red hair. He went home and dyed his hair to support this other kid. So those kinds of videos. I know we're out of time, yes, but I just, that's a really good idea, and I have lots of resources in my office, so maybe in a, a, an upcoming newsletter, I can send maybe a list of things that you guys can share with me. All right, yeah, so since we're a little bit past 7.30, we want Sorry. to encourage people to come and keep our meetings within an hour, so um, if you guys have more questions, I'm, I'm sure that you guys will probably linger a little bit longer, so individual questions, feel free to come up. And don't forget Amy's um, invitation to start creating some of the structures for the fairy gnome homes for the fall festival. And thank you so much for coming out. I kind of say very quickly that she's tonight. I just want to take note of Adrian tonight. Her birthday is sacrificial and is very, very good as a school of the PO. And I need to do a little. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>